guys uh, today uh, we will be discussing about uh, the electrotechnic pass paper the 2017-18 pass paper uh, so i have selected some uh, questions uh, and uh, thought of discussing those selected questions uh, right we will move on okay. so the first question is uh, what is the resistance range of uh, resistor displaying the color bands green violet red and silver right so uh, there are a few color ranges right so you have to remember those color ranges it's fair simple so it is uh, b right? b r o y uh, g b v g w right and uh, other than this there is gold and silver right so so simply you can remember this bb roy great britain so i used to remember in that manner bb roy great britain and vgw right so the values are 0 1 2 3 4 5 and it's respectively goes on 6 7 8 9 and this has a 5 percentage tolerance and this one has a 10 percentage tolerance these are tolerance value right? so the colors are right you can simply if you remember the first letters you can simply write it starts from black and you get brown and then red and orange and uh, yellow Right, green, right, blue, violet, gray, and white. Right. So when we take a resistor, right? When we take a resistor, there will be always four color bands. Right. Always remember the rightmost one. This would be either gold or silver, right? Either one of these, the RHS one, the right hand side. You should always keep the resistors right hand side. Uh, there should be gold color or silver color. The other three things are the color codes, right? For just for an assumption, I am just stating that the first color is. Uh, uh, let's take the first color as uh, red, and the second color as green right and the third color as uh, let's say brown right for first and second digit you have to just directly write the value of that color so for in case of red it is two in case of green it is five right so the third color you have to write in powers so that is 10 to the power brown is one so 10 to the power one so the value is 250 ohms right uh, but in our case they have given us uh, the colors are green right uh, violet and red and silver green violet red and silver so we need we no need to worry about silver we know it is all in the right hand side the other three things they are asking the range range means the maximum and the minimum right so whatever the values we give here the minimum minimum and maximum can be selected with the power easily right so the maximum should have the highest power and the minimum should have the lowest power right so what is the value of uh, green green is 5 uh, violet is 7 and red is 2 right so when violet goes in the third place right when violet has the third place it has the maximum power that is 10 to the power 7 so i am taking violet to the third place i am considering the maximum situation so always silver will be at the end so i am taking violet to the third place so here it would be 10 to the power of 7 right so other two values are green and red so using green and red either we can write 52 or either we can write 25 so obviously 52 is bigger so first it goes for green then red so the value becomes 52 times 10 to the power 7 ohms or 520 mega ohms right this is the maximum value so what would be the minimum value 
minimum value obviously the power should be the smallest power so that is red since it is 2 it gives the smallest power as 10 to the power of 2 so what is the other two values 5 and 7 using 5 and 7 we have to form the smallest number so that is green first and violet second because 57 is the smallest number so 57 times 10 to the power 2 ohms so these are the answer for the first part right so simply you need to remember this so i used to remember it as a name right db roy and his country great britain and vgw right so the last three letters and gold and silver you have to keep it in mind right so um, uh, so that is the first part right so i'll attach the paper in, uh, in the description so you can find the paper there right so we'll move on to the next part right so the next part is um, there's a circuit given to us right so i'll just quickly draw the circuit right a simple circuit with two parallel resistors right there's a resistor here and a switch and there's another resistor here right and there's an elect source and there's another resistor right this is the setup so this is simple r this is e this is capital r and this is capital r so in the question right when you read the question right it is stated that when s is open and this s means this switch when s is open the power in the US, right, so power in the resistance right is same as the power when s is closed so at both the instances power for the device is same so device in the sense here it is capital r so either when s is closed both the r when s is open only this r right so the power for the device r is same right so when s is open when the switch is open so this resistor this i'll mark it in red color right this resistor won't work because it is in open circuit only the other resistor will work so simply you can use ohm's law right so v equal ir i assume the current as v1 we don't know what is the current as uh, i1 so e equal i1 into the total resistance is r plus r since this capital r and this simple r are in series so i1 is equal to e by r plus r so we know power is equal to i squared into r so from that equation power can be written as e squared r over r plus r so similarly when s is closed right now s is closed so again we can use v equal i r right so here again electromotive force e equal to the current would change because now this both the r's would be parallel so the resultant would be r by 2 and the current will be definitely changed so i2 times the total resistance is r by 2 plus r because this r and r are parallel capital r both the capital r's are parallel so you will get r by 2 and that r by 2 is series to simple r right simple right so i2 is equal to capital e by r by 2 plus r so similarly power can be written as right e squared over r by 2 plus r whole thing squared into r by 2 remember they are saying about the device device means both the r's when s is closed the entire device is both this r and this r so the resultant is r by 2 so you have to be careful in that so we know according to the data these both are according to the data we the these both the powers are same so we can equate the powers right we, these two powers can be equated when equating these two powers some of the terms would be cancelled so the remaining terms would be 1 over r plus r squared is equal to 1 over r by 2 plus r or into 2 and a squared here right so we can first multiply and when we solve we'll get r squared by 2 plus r into r plus r 2 r squared equal to in the other side we'll get r squared plus sorry here 2 r right 
so here 2 r into r plus r squared so these terms and these terms will cancel out so r squared by 2 would be equal to r squared so capital r would be equal to root 2 times simple r this is the final answer they are asking us to find the ratio between capital r and simple r right very simple you can use your typical ohm's law and do the question so one thing you have to remember when the you have to be careful when selecting this r by 2 value because they are talking about the device right when s is open the device is only r when s is closed the device is the result and that is r by 2 right so you have to find the respective current for both the situation and you have to find the power for both the situation as both the powers are equal they have given us so we can find out what is the value right so simple question right so the next part so the c part right uh, the c parts uh, they are us a circuit with some bulbs right i'll just quickly draw the circuit and there's a bulb here there's another bulb here right there's another bulb here another bulb here and the resistor so this is the simple circuit right this is b1 b2 b3 and b4 right the electromotive force is uh, uh, it's unknown we don't know the electromotive force this is 0.5 ohms these are the details given and uh, bulbs ratings are given for b1 b2 and b3 for all these three things the ratings are given this is 4v and 4w that is 4 watt 4 voltage and 4 watts right this is 4v and 8w this is 4v and 2w right and the current flowing through the first bulb that is current here i1 right and the current flowing through the third bulb i3 these are given so i1 is 360 milliamperes 360 milliamperes and i3 is 540 milliamperes right the question is to find right they have asked us to find b4 rating and emf these are the questions right so it's a very fairly very simple question right first of all using these three bulbs right these data you have to find the resistance right without the resistance we can't handle the question right so to find the resistance we know p equal to v squared by r right so p r equal to v squared by p right for the first bulb so for b1 r equal r1 equal to v squared that is 4 squared by 4 so that is 4 ohms right similarly for b2 r2 is equal to 4 squared by 8 so that is 2 ohms right uh, for b3 again r3 is equal to 4 squared by 2 so that is 8 ohms so you have found all the values right resistance values now if you see right uh, between these two points i'm marking here right between these two points a and b right i'll write a and c right ac voltage is equal so vac right vac can be written as i1 into r1 similarly it can be written as i2 into r2 right the current through the second bulb is i2 right so i1 is 360 r1 we just found out it is 4 i2 we don't know and r2 is 2 so from this you can find out i2 is 720 milliamperes right very simple using ohm's law right so this i1 and i2 joins at point c and flows through the single wire and again it divides into i3 and i4 so according to kirchhoff's first law kirchhoff's first law states that uh, at a certain junction the current flowing inside the junction the current flowing into the junctions 
algebraic sum you have to find the algebraic sum the current algebraic sum of current flowing into the junction is zero so in that case we can write from Kirchhoff's right Kirchhoff's first law we can write i1 plus i2 minus i3 minus i4 equals zero because i3 and i4 are leaving the junction c right so in that case i1 and i2 is 360 plus 720 equal to i'll take i3 and i4 to the other side so i3 is 540 and i4 i don't know the value of i4 so using this you can find i4 is equal to 540 milliampers right so i4 is done right so if you see again if you see these two points right so i will just name it as uh, d and f right so if you see point d and f voltage are same right so v d f can be written as i3 r3 that is equal to i4 into r4 isn't it so if you observe correctly i3 and i r3 are equal sorry i3 and uh, i4 are equal both are 540 same points so voltage is equal so definitely r3 and r4 should be equal so without doing any calculation you can write r4 is equal to 8 ohms without any calculation you can directly write that, right so you know what is r right so now if you know r4 you need to find the voltage of that bulb so v4 is equal to i4 into r4 so what is i4 I4 is uh, 540 milliampere so 0 0.54 into your uh, resistance 8 so this would be your voltage right what is power here power we can write as I squared into R so P4 power rating P4 is equal to I squared into R so what is I squared 0 0.54 squared into 8 watts so this is the power rating right so the first part is done right the second part is EMF right so EMF you need to uh, to find the EMF it's also very simple you can apply Kirchhoff's second law right right if you apply Kirchhoff's second law right I'll uh, I'll take this upper loop that means uh, from E I'll go through I1 bulb B1 and then I'll go through bulb B2 sorry uh, B3 and then again I'll come down right in that manner right so I'll write in the next page right uh, Kirchhoff's second law right. so always we have to select a direction so I am going to go in this direction right. so always to make it easier remember the direction of EMF is always from the negative to the positive side so both the sides are same so we are applying in the same direction so E so that is one side the other side is just about uh, the IR products right so the IR product the first IR product is I1 into R1 so I1 R1 plus the next product if you see it is I3 R3 I3 R3 plus the finally here this I3 plus I4 the total current flows through this resistance 0.5 so finally it is 0 0.5 times I3 plus I4 so if we substitute here I1 we know I1 is 0 0.36 and R1 is 4 ohms right plus I3 we just found out it's uh, sorry it's given as 0 0.54 and R3 we found out R3 as 8 ohms right and 0 0.5 times I3 plus I4 is 1.08 because i3 and i4 are both i equal i3 is 0.54 so 2 times 0 1.08 so totally you can solve and you can find the value right so the solved value you would be getting around um, 6.3 watts so here the solved values for v4 so for v4 the solved value is uh, if I am right, V4, just I'll do a quick calculation into 8, it's 4.32, right? And P4, it's um, P4, it's 
2.33 right w right so the second part is also done right uh, and the finally they have asked uh, what is the total power dissipated in the circuit right so they are asking the total power entire power dissipated in the circuit so you know what is the entire voltage and you know what is the entire current flow so then you can simply write the power total power pt is equal to p into i so it is 6.3 times 1.08 so 6.3 times 1.08 so you are getting 6.8 right it's 6.8 volts so fairly simple question right so you'll you might be uh, you might need around 10 or 15 minutes to do these uh, calculations very simple right just you need to know the basics right so the first question is entirely done so now uh, question number two right question number two is based on Kirchhoff's uh, law and there is a circuit I'll quickly draw the circuit right so here is an uh, energy source E right there's a resistance R right and there are three another two resistance right one is 3R and other one is 4R so this is 3R and 4R right here this is 2R and there is a EMF source here that is 2E right and right this is the circuit so the R is given to us as 1000 ohms and E is given as 25 volt so they are asking us to find the current through every resistor right when it comes to Kirchhoff's law you have to be bit cunning and uh, reduce the unknowns as much as possible right so I'll mark two points. So you have to find the easier points. So at this point and this point. The voltage difference between these two red color points are same. So that means, um, so V equal, I'll just assume the current through 4R is I4. So I4 into 4R. Here this side, it's I3 into 3R, right? So if you see, so I4 by I3 is equal to 3 by 4 right so if the ratio of resistance is 4 is to 3 the ratio of current is 3 is to 4 the other way around so here this is 3i and here this is 4i so the total current flowing here is 7i so i am assuming a current is coming from this battery as i1 plus 7i so it here 7 high separates us down according to Kirchhoff's first law the remaining current has to flow in this side it's very simple now you have only two unknowns so you need to apply only two Kirchhoff's law so I am naming the circuit A B C D I am not using E I am using F G and H right while using Kirchhoff's law in the exam you have to write using Kirchhoff's law and you have to write the loop name I am writing as A B C D uh, F G H A and the direction so I am applying in this direction that is anti-clockwise direction so first of all we have to see the EMF direction so I have already told so to find the direction of EMF just put a line from negative side to positive side so we are applying anti-clockwise direction so 2e is in positive direction and e is in negative direction that's all so other things are in ir product if the current flow and you are applying direction are same then positive or other else negative so here it is 2r times 7i plus i1 right plus i1 times r so equation 1 right so the second equation you can select a smaller circuit uh, like A, uh, B, C, uh, H, A same direction you can apply it's 2E equal 2R into 7I plus I1 uh, plus 3R into 4I so there are two equations right two unknowns two equations the unknowns are I1 and Right, I1 and I. So if you calculate, right, I1 and I, right, uh, 
so I have done the calculation right so I1 value of I1 is uh, minus 1 ampere right minus 1 milliampere that means the direction of I1 is wrong it is other way around but that that, that must, does not mean that your calculation is wrong right only the direction is other way around right and I uh, the other value I is 2 milliampere so this is not the question the question is current through each and every resistance so what is the current through resistance R it is I1 so through R the current is in this direction it is 1 milliampere right so current through 2R is current through 2R is in this direction it is 7i so that means I1 plus 7i so I1 is minus 1 7i is 14 so that is 13 amperes milliamperes so you have to similarly find for every 3R and 4R right for 3R if you see for 3R resistance it's 4i 4i means right 8 milliamperes right it's in the same direction right and uh, here also it's in same direction here in the opposite direction clockwise direction for 4R it is 3i so 6 milliampere right so if you have to write the final answer properly you have to answer the question what they have asked right don't keep it is uh, incomplete right so fairly simple question with Kirchhoff's second law right it's Kirchhoff's second law right so the next part is about uh, principle of superposition right so uh, you I think you all uh, know what is principle of superposition you can get it from the textbooks right so uh, the theory behind principle of superposition is if there are any EMF more than one no more than two or uh, many EMF sources you have to replace that EMF source with their internal resistance so in our case if we draw the first circuit we can remove this E right so there is no any internal resistance so simply here it is R and the other resistances here so here it is 4R and here it is 3R right and here it is 2R and then this 2E right so the first circuit is complete yeah, they are asking you to draw the circuit only only to draw it right so if you want to solve in this case you have to just find the resultants for 4R and 3R and 4R and you have to do this because the 4R and 3R are parallel the resultant is again parallel to R so then the resultant of all these three resistors are in series with 2R that's then you have to apply Ohm's law and do it right don't bring and apply Kirchhoff's law again into superposition law right so, so those both are completely different things uh, the next circuit is you have to remove 2E and keep E right that's all so here we are keeping this E source and removing other source so here it is R and here it is 4R and here it is 3R right and here you have 2R and the circuit is complete right so these are the two circuits they have ask you to sketch only to sketch so simply done all right so when solving try to find the resultant and solve it not uh, with your Kirchhoff's law right so two questions are done right so the third question is about electric field right it's about electric electrostatic field right so the first thing is about Gauss theorem right the Gauss theorem states that if there is an enclosed closed body that is an enclosed body and if you have a charged in charged charged particle on the surface or inside the surface the electric flux coming out of that closed surface is 1 over epsilon times the charge the enclosed charge right here that is only Q so it's only Q epsilon is the permittivity of the medium permittivity right permittivity of the medium vacuum has the highest permittivity vacuum allows everything 
then AI, AI is very close to permittivity so very close to vacuum's permittivity so we usually consider both the same and we write it as epsilon naught right so this is the simple idea right so in the next question right they have said about uh, some sphere right i'll just roughly draw those sphere right to make it easier i'll try to draw those Here. Right, bear with me for a minute. I'll just to try to draw this one as clearly as possible so that you I can explain it properly. Right. This, let's say this is our first circle right with radius a and there is another circle with radius b and there is a other circle with radius c right so here they have said right uh, the first sphere this is uh, the first sphere is with radius a right the second is with radius b right and the third the larger one is radius c so they are asking you to sketch the variation of the electric field right the variation of the electric field that is the electro electric field means electric field intensity that is simple e simple e, sorry capital e capital e is the electric flux per unit area right so the flux flown in unit area so if we cross multiply we can get phi is equal to e times a so we are going to use gauss theorem we are going to equate this part and this part right so if you are going to use the gauss theorem we need to understand about the charge right so in conducting sphere they have said this small sphere is a conducting sphere so this conducting sphere always conducts the charge to the surface so there is a conducting charge of 2q plus 2q Right. but uh, the other sphere this one right uh, this uh, between b and c this is a insulating sphere right between b and c this one is insulating sphere so insula insulating sphere has even distribution of charge we assume that the charge is evenly distributed so this is they have said it is a negatively charged uh, circle so not circle it's a sphere right so the charge in this sphere is minus 4q so that minus 4q is evenly distributed along this charge right so we will just start right the first condition is when r is less than a so when first condition r that is radius is less than a so when radius is less than a something like this circle right there is if you can see from this dotted circle there is no any charged enclosed so from Gauss theorem and this definition of electric field intensity we can write E times A equal to uh, Q by epsilon naught right so Q is 0 here therefore electric field intensity is 0 so first part is done simple as that so the second part is when R when R is greater than A and less than B right so that is between here So here the total enclosed charge is 2q. You can see the total enclosed charge is 2q. Right? Still we didn't touch the negative surface place. So still we are within inside that. So we don't need to consider the charges outside that surface. Only the things inside. So the enclosed charge is uh, 2q. So from E times, so I'm using this equation. Right? E times the area that is 4 pi r squared this is a sphere right so 4 pi r squared right that is equal to the enclosed charge 2q over epsilon no so this implies capital E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 2q by r squared right so when it comes to the third section right third section that is r is greater than b 
and less than c now we are entering into this sphere right so when it comes to this sphere right i'll just try to draw a circle again right you have to understand the concept here So, so we are in some something like this location right now so when we see that area so I'll just highlight it right? so we are in this area right we have to consider only this charges negative charges within this area right within this enclosed area right so in this case we don't know what is the exact amount of charge here so we have to find that right so just it's a simple fairly simple calculation right uh, we'll just do that calculation right so we know there is 4q charge right sorry about that right we know that there is 4q charge right in the total area so total volume that is 4 by 3 pi c cube minus b cube and right? this is the total volume so there is a charge of 4q within this volume right so what would be the charge in this smaller volume right so that smaller volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube minus b cube so from this we can write that the charge in that shaded area that is a negative charge in that shaded area is 4 cube 4 q r cube minus b cube over c cube minus b cube so this is the negative charge negative charge in the shaded area so we have only found the negative charge so we are assuming that this is evenly distributed and we are finding the charge in that area using simple volume calculation right so what would be the enclosed charge i'm moving into the next floor next page right so the enclosed charged in that area would be 2q minus since it is negative 4q times r cube minus b cube over c cube minus b cube so now this is the enclosed charge now we can use our Gauss theorem right from Gauss theorem we can write E times A this is equal to Q by epsilon right so this implies E times 4 pi r squared is equal to enclosed charge right I am taking this entire term as capital Q right I am taking this entire term as capital Q so capital Q by epsilon right so E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon times capital Q by R square right simple as that right it's not any big de big deal it's very simple right so the last part is the fourth section is when R is greater than C so if R is greater than C we are or we are already out of all these three cylinder three spheres so what would be the enclosed charge here there is a 2q positive 2q here there is a negative 4q so total enclosed charge is negative 2q so e times the area is 4 pi r squared that is equal to the enclosed charge is minus 2q over epsilon naught so this implies e is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon into minus 2q by r squared right so we have done the calculations so they are asking us to plot a graph right plotting graph is also very easy we'll just plot a graph right we'll just draw two axes right one is your e axis that is your intensity and the other one is your distance so this is e right e and this is r right so there are three variation points one is a another one is b and c right when until a when r is less than a we know e is equal to 0 right so from 0 to a value is 0 right i'll draw it in another color let's use the red color one so here it is 0 until here once it reaches a 
right once it reaches a right so this is from a to b right once it reaches a the radius is a now right r is equal to a so what is the value 1 over from this equation we can write 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 2 q by a squared so from the graph it takes a value as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 2 q over a squared so it suddenly goes up to this value right and until b it start to, starts to reduce right because when distance when r increases the value of e when r increases the value of b, e decreases so when it reaches b again the value is same value from this equation but you have to note that it is lesser than the previous value when it is at a because b is larger than a right so now the graph would have uh, definitely it's a curve because it is r squared in 1 over r squared format so here the value is right, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 2 q by b squared right once it is it has passed b we are in entering into the negative region right so there the equation is bit different so now this is the equation right so here we have to consider every other parameters right definitely the value will start to drop down right and at one stage this positive part will be cancelled by this negative part right both will get to zero and at one case definitely the graph will be passing through the x-axis because right you can just it's a simple common sense because this is 2q and this is minus 4q if it is minus 4q it is definitely greater than minus 2q right so somewhere in between passing from b to c their graph will definitely the electric field intensity will be zero and it will change the direction so somewhere here right the graph is somewhere in between the graph is going to change the direction let's say here we don't know the exact value again the graph will be moving like this and after that it is changing direction and it will change to this format right so it will touch the graph here right so when r is equal to c you can apply here right when r is equal to c right the c cube minus b cube c cube c cube c cube minus b cube part will cancel out and the enclosed charge will be minus 2 cube right when r is equal to c it will get the same value right so because electric field intensity these are continuous graphs right so here the value is minus 1 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught in minus into 2 q over c squared right so once you have reached that point now you are now graph is greater than c so now you are increasing r and r and r and r when r approaches to infinity e becomes zero so this is an asymptotic graph right so here this will start to in reduce and it will go near the y x-axis but it won't touch so this would be the graph when the variation of variation of e versus r graph so it's a fairly very simple concept you have to just know how the uh, relationship behave that is here e is proportional to 1 over r squared so this fundamental relationship if you know this fundamental relationship and some basic ideas you can draw this right so fairly simple part so the next part here they have asked two more things uh, both sphere and shell are filled with conducting material now both are conducting right i'll just give you the idea for this if both are conducting right here this 2q will be at the surface and the next sphere and the final sphere here this 4q will be also at the surface know that evenly spreading thing is nothing here so the here it's very fairly simple calculations right so when r is less than a enclosed charge is zero so e equals zero when r is between a and b when r is between a and b uh, there is somewhere in this area right so only enclosed charge is 2q so e is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon into q over r square so 2q over r square right when r is between b and c again only this 2q part 
because 4q is on the surface so right? this is minus 4q minus 4q is on the surface so again e is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 2q by r squared and when r is greater than c now only this 4q thing will come into picture right so e is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon to minus 2q by r squared because the enclosed charge is minus 4q and 2q so the resultant is minus 2q so you have to draw the graph for this so this is fairly simple right when it comes to insulating material right again there are same three spheres right here the positive charge will be sp evenly spread here right and the negative charge will be evenly distributed here right so when r is less than a so you have to find according to the volume right so that is E equal 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught right here Q the charge so you know right in the tot in the total volume of 4 by 3 pi a Q there is a charge of 2 Q now the volume is 4 by 3 pi r Q right into here bottom it's r square so 4 by 3 pi will cancel out 4 by 3 pi will cancel out so 1 over 4 pi epsilon into 2 cube over a cube right into r right so here the graph is e is proportional to a right? here the graph changes in a different manner e is proportional to a right for so, and the, for if you draw until a right i'll just draw that part only right until e right here until a it starts from 0 and it will slightly increases up to a and when it reaches a the value is again same value what is what is the value 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 2 q by a squared when r is equal to a you will get the same value right as the other situations so beyond that it is the same question as this one right In the similar calculation you have to be careful when uh, uh, coming to that region when negative also comes into play and you have to draw, draw the graph right the only difference is the starting portion right the starting portion is a bit different because there's a linear variation only for r less than a this portion here e is proportional to r right so the idea is this is insulating and this is conducting right so in conducting the sphere the charges would be at the surface for insulating it would be evenly spread so you have to find the enclosed charge for the particular area they have described and use the Gauss theorem so what is Gauss theorem Gauss theorem is phi is equal to q by epsilon naught and that is equal to e into a so this is the idea you need right so flux is uh, the electric field intensity in a particular area right so in, from in any area what other electric field intensity coming out that is the electric flux right so i think you can easily handle uh, this part right uh, so that is the question three right it's electric field question right so the next question i uh, selected is from uh, magnetism right so it's from electromagnetism right magnetism right so they have given us a figure right a figure has a positive as a uh, magnetic field uh, magnetic field density right here it's not intensity it's magnetic field density into the paper and there is a particle which is moving in this direction right so the velocity is in this manner right so if the force is in this direction only if there is a force F is generated in this direction then only the particle can curve upward or else it can't curve upward right so if it is a positive particle current and the particles velocity current and velocity in same direction right same direction same direction if it is a negative particle 
right current and velocity i opposite direction so here you have to use Fleming's left hand rule so according to Fleming's left hand rule if you take the index finger right the index finger gives the field that is a magnetic field the middle finger right gives the index finger gives the field the middle finger gives the current right and uh, your thumb gives the force direction so you have to remember this and if you apply uh, the Fleming's left hand rule here you can see that the middle finger the currents one and the velocity are in opposite directions in this case so that implies that the particle is negatively charged so this is negatively charged particle so this is an electron right so here the particle is a negatively charged particle fairly very simple first part right so in the second part right uh, they are asking us to find the mass right so there are some data given that is this velocity is 140 meters per second and uh, this uh, field is 0 0.48 tesla right and uh, the charge of the particle it is charge q is 8.2 into 10 to the power minus 7 i think right minus 4 right minus 4 coulomb so only the magnitude is given right so calculate the mass of the particle right uh, radius is given radius of this path r is 960 meter so you have to use f equal ma so f equal ma right so force on a moving particle in magnetic field is given by bqv sine theta so you need to remember this equation so m into here v squared by r centrifugal uh, acceleration right mm. Here's uh, field and particles directions are perpendicular to each other. So theta is 90 degree. So theta is 90 degree. So we can write BQ is equal to MV by R. So one one V is cancelled out in both sides. So the uh, question is M. So M is BQ R by V. So we know B is 0 0.48. Q is 8.2 into 10 to the power minus 4. R is 960 or v is 140 so fairly simple calculation you can find m so the only thing you need to remember is this equation and you have to apply f equal m a so very simple calculation just you need to remember the appropriate equations all right uh, the next part right so the next part is again from magnetism right it's a loop right they have given us a loop triangular loop i'll just simply draw the loop right so in this loop there's a current flowing uh, in this clockwise direction right so it's 5 amperes right and there is a field right there's a field of uh, 3 ampere 3 teslas right it's 3 tesla right uh, the lengths are given p q r so p q is 0.6 meters this is 0.8 meters obviously from pythagoras theorem this is one meter right so they are asking us to find uh, the f force on each side so f p q f p r and f q r right f p q f p r and f p q is obviously zero you need no need to do any calculation if there should be any force generated in an rod right in an electrical electric field uh, sorry current flowing rod it should cut the magnetic field in some angle or perpendicularly here both are parallel if both are parallel from framing's left hand rule you can see you can't find the force right if both are parallel then only two fingers are available so that is directly zero so when it comes to pr uh, fpr you can use bil sine theta right so when a rod is moving this is the equation bil sine theta so b is 3 i phi l is 0.8 and sine 90 degree so angle between the field and current is 90 degree right so here the value is 12 newton 
right so what is the direction if you apply fleming's uh, uh, left hand rule here right uh, the current so it is into the paper right so it's in cross right so fqr right fqr is equal to bil right sin theta so again b is 5 uh, sorry b is 3 i is 5 l is 1 and sin theta so here theta the b is in this direction so theta is the acute angle formed between the current and uh, field so that means this is theta so sine theta is 0 0.8 by 1 right 0 0.8 by 1 so if you solve this is 12 newton and the direction if you see the direction from uh, using uh, Fleming's rectangle rule it is outside the paper so dot right it's outside the board it's dot so each force are uh, right we have calculated the each force they are asking the net force so what is net force net force is zero Right. net force acting on the loop is zero because 12 newton into the paper and 12 newton outside the paper so its net force is zero but there can be a net couple right the question is only up to zero or up to force so i am just uh, saying this there can be a couple right so the couple is here in the pr the force would be acting at the center right here the force would be at the center and similarly it qr also force would be at the center according to midpoint theorem this distance would be 0.3 right so what would be the couple force times distance so force is 12 and the distance is 0.3 so it is 3.6 newton meter there is a resultant couple so this loop will rotate right but there there won't be any translation so there won't be any net force right so no net force no translation translation means the setup was won't move from one place to another it will rotate in the same place right it will rotate at the same place like a motor right it will rotate at there right so this this is the concept behind uh, motor and dynamos right motor and dynamos and all right there won't be any net force no net force but there will be a couple right so that is the application here right so simply you can there's a tip here for you all so motor dynamo always remember md jam company right so for motor this m letter is in left hand side right this d letter is in right hand side right so what is a function of motor so more for a motor we apply the current we give the current and it will generate a force so that is Fleming's left hand rule right so left hand side left hand rule dynamo what is the function of a dynamo you give the force and it will give the current you have to give the force and it will give the current so this is Fleming's right hand rule so just remember the MD jam company right MD right is marketing department actually but here for us it is motor and dynamo right it's a simple tip tip for you right so that's it for the magnetic uh, part right so fairly simple question right so now i'll move on to the most requested session the rlc circuit So um, here RLC circuit, the first part is they are asking a theory part that is about your RMS average part, right? So you can read that in your textbook, right? So I'll move to the calculation, right? So we have a simple RLC circuit. Right? We have an inductor, right? We have a capacitor and a resistor parallel to each other, right? We have a current source, right? This is our system, right? lc and r right so our l is 250 milli henry and our c is 2 microfarads and our r is uh, 250 ohms right so vl is given to us that is the voltage for the inductor is given that is 34 sine 2000 t right so from this you can directly write that omega is equal to 2000 and our V L R M S right always do the calculation with R M S that is 34 by root 2 right so this is the reference also V L is our reference also 
they have asked us to find the current through each and every components that is L, C and R, right? So before moving to the calculation, first of all, we have to find the reactance of L, C. So reactance is something similar to resistance, but which occurs in uh, inductor and capacitor. So XL, so XL, that is the letter for reactance, that is J into L omega, J is the uh, imaginary part, right? Imaginary number. So here J times 250 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 2000, right? So this gives us 500 J. And XC, right? XC is equal to minus J over C omega. So minus J over C is 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 into 2000. So this gives us, right? Uh, give me a second to do the calculation. That's minus 250J. So minus 250J. Right? You can use the calculators. Right? So I'll just show that also uh, in a following calculation. Right? So the first uh, first we know what is VL. Right? VL, VL, RMS value we know. We know the reactance of inductor. So we can simply use V equal IR for the so V equal I Z actually. So the impedance for the inductor L. So I L is given by V L by Z L or X L, right? So we definitely we are using X in this part, right? So V L is 34 by root 2 divided by here 500 J, right? So you can use your calculators, right? So I'll just show it to you all. So right. So if you take your calculator, right? Here. First of all, set your calculator. You go to mode and set your calculator to complex mode. That is 2. Right? Then open a fraction. So 34 divided by root 2. That is your RMS voltage. And down in the denominator, it is 500. And J, you, have, you can see in dark blue buttons, there is a button at the last row, second button. That is E and G. Right? If you press that button, you will get the complex number I. Right? So you will get the current as I'll just round it down to two decimal places. So this is minus 0 0.05 J. Right. So this is the value. Right. And you need to convert this to polar format. When you convert this to polar format, it is easier to draw the um, phasor diagram. Right. So to convert to polar format, again using your calculator, you press shift and press number 2 right so you will get these options in this option you have to take the third option right so if you take the third option you will get 0 0.05 is your magnitude and your angle is minus 90 right if you if you move your, you can see the angle is minus 90 so our value is it's 0 0.05 amperes and the angle is minus 90 so IL part is completed and right? we have found IL right now if you see the circuit properly here these two points are same right so connected between same points c and r are connected between same points so definitely voltage is same so if we equate the voltage right that is ic into xc is equal to ir into r right so ic we don't know ic we just found out uh, xc that is minus 250j is equal to IR into 250 right so minus J times IC is equal to IR right so we have found that relationship if you see this circuit properly the IL is flowing here so the current is current is flowing IL is flowing and it is splitting into IC and IR here it is IC and here it is IR so what is IL IL is IC plus IR that is Kirchhoff's first law. So IL is equal to IC plus IR. So in, in terms of IR, I am substituting this value. So IL is equal to 1 minus J times IC. 
so i c is equal to i l divided by 1 minus j right so here it is 1 minus j what is i l we just found out i l is minus 0.05 j use the complex number so minus 0.05 j so if you divide this again you can use the calculator right you can use the calculator i'll just clear it out so open a fraction so minus 0.05 i divided by 1 minus j j means here in calculator it is i right you will get 1 by 40 so i will just change it to decimals right so it is uh, minus 0 0.025 minus 0 0.025 j right oh, sorry it's plus right Here it is plus right so now you have to convert this to polar format so in in polar format ic is equal to so here you have to convert to polar format shift 2 and option 3 so if you see the answer is 0 0.035 0 0.035 and the angle is minus 45 right 0. 0 0.035 amperes and angle is minus 45 so using this relationship we can find ir so ir is minus j times ic what is ic it is 0 0.025 minus 0 0.025 j so if you multiply this you will get um, minus 0 0.025 minus 0.025 j and again if you convert to polar format ir is equal to 0 0.035 ampere and minus 135 degrees so ir right so the current is done so we have found everything in polar format right but the question asks us to write it in sign form right they asking us to write in sign form not a big deal now all the values which we have calculated are in rms values right so in the sign format if you see that is i equal to im into sin omega t plus or minus 5 right so this im is the peak value right with the, using rms value if you multiply it by root 2 you will get the peak value so i is equal to 0 0.05 square root 2 is 0 0.05 square root 2 sine 2000 t minus 90 so first part done so what is the next part here ic is equal to 0 0.035 root 2 right sine 2000 minus 45 right here ir is equal to 0 0.035 root 2 right? sine 2000 minus 2000 t minus 135 right so all the values are done right so next they are asking us to find the supply voltage right so this applied voltage is the next question this is e right so here the supply voltage is equal to voltage of this part that is voltage of uh, the inductor plus voltage of either capacitor or resistor whatever it is the total would be the voltage of this e right so we know the current right we know the current of inductor that is zero minus 0 0.05 j and we know the um, ah, we know the voltage itself right so we know the voltage of uh, uh, the inductor 34 by root 2 so only remaining part is the voltage of these two points either you have to take capacitor or either you have to take the uh, resistor so total e right e is equal to 34 by root 2 plus ir by into r so 34 by root 2 plus what is our ir ir in complex number that is minus 0 0.025 minus 0 0.025 j right so minus 0 0.025 minus 0 0.025 j into r is 250 so you have to just use your calculator and find the e value right just i'll show that the calculation right so if you take the calculator 
clear it out so our fraction right it starts with fraction so 34 um, by right root 2 here uh, plus open bracket negative 0 0.025 minus 0 0.025 i close bracket into 250 right so i'll just change it to decimals so it is 17.79 so 17.8 roughly 17.8 minus 6.25 i right 17.8 minus 6.25 i so it is 17.8 minus 6.25 i so here j so if we convert it to polar format so shift 2 and option 3 so it is 18.85 so 18.86 and minus 19.4 angle right so it's 18.86 and 19.4 minus sorry 18.86 volt and angle is minus 19.4 so it's 19.4 degree so what is our voltage in sine format so in sine format e is equal to 18.86 root 2 sine 2000 t minus 19.4 degree right so it's done right now they are asking the power right power from the circuit right you know the total voltage so this is your total voltage you know the total current flow what is the total current flow total current flow is your il so this is your total current so what is the total power right So the total power P is equal to E times IL. So what is E? It is 17.8 minus 6.25 times your L that is minus 0 0.05 J. So if you solve this, again use your calculators. Right? I'm just using. So this is our I, right? So this is our i right so into minus 0 0.05 I. so you will get the total power here so remember to write it in uh, polar format and uh, complex number format so in complex number it's minus 0.3 and minus 0.9 so minus minus 0.3 minus 0.9 j so in polar format right i'll just convert it to polar format so shift 2 and 3 so in polar format 0 0.94 and minus 109 degrees so it's minus 109 degrees and 0.94 so it's 0 0.94 watts and minus 109 degree odd value right so this is our total power this is the apparent power right this is the apparent power next they have asked the power factor right power factor is right power factor is active power divided by active power right active power by apparent power no by apparent power you know the apparent power apparent power is 0.94 what is the active power active power is this 0.3 reactive power is 0.9 right so what is active power active power it's minus here don't worry about the minus right it's only because of the complex format so here it is 0.3 by 0.94 this is your power factor right so this reactive power part you can't use so there are three types of power right active reactive and apparent right so active is the power which we are using right that is the power which we use and the actual power right 
we have to use an imaginary pure we can't use this one it will generate in a circuit but we can't use that one apparent is the result which we are paying the money so however in a household uh, if you take a house we have only one meter to measure electricity that is we are directly measuring the apparent power but the reactive power in that part is very low right so it doesn't affect that much but when you go for an industry especially electrical and elect- electronic students if you go for any industries just have a look there will be in their engine room right in their main distribution room uh, there will be a capacitor bank right a cupboard like thing this is used to reduce the reactive power right in um, in industries there will be two meters one to measure active power and another to measure reactive power okay. so active power is always measured in watts and reactive power is measured in uh, volt ampere mostly in kilowatts and kilo kilo volt ampere right so sometimes this might increase drastically and they have to pay lump sum of money here right so they will try to reduce this one because if it is generated though it is generated we can't use that one so this is the actual effective one so we need this one we have to somewhat reduce this one right so to reduce this part we are using the capacitor banks right typically they use capacitor banks in industries and there are some other certain procedures like uh, switching on the machinery in a certain manner so the kva meter won't rise up right so that is the concept they are in reactive power we have to somewhat reduce that reactive power right so the next part is sketching phase diagram very very simple part right so if you take uh, axis right it's very simple just draw it in a graph sheet so it would be much easier so this would be your right your imaginary part i part and this would be your real part right so first of all we'll start with the current right so what is our il right so if you see il il is 0.05 in minus 90 degree so always vl is the reference so if vl is re- reference vl has 404 uh, phase difference and this is completely a real number so vl would be here this would be vl in along the x axis this is vl so what is minus 90 so minus 90 is in this anti clockwise direction somewhere here so this would be your il right so vl and il are completed right what is ic if you see here ic is minus uh, sorry ic is 0.035 and minus 45 degree right so minus 45 degree means it would be somewhere here right so this is ic right so what was ir ir was my uh, again 0.035 same value but minus 135 so it would be somewhere here so how would you decide the length of the line so use a graph sheet and according to the magnitude uh, draw the length right so using a graph sheet is much easier you have to be careful with your angles that's all right simple angles what is vl so without any calculation we have already done vl uh, we'll come to vc for in case of vr right vr is fairly simple you can find out vr here and right? you know ir you have to just multiply by 250 right so you can find vr so in case of resistance there is no phase difference between vr and ir no phase difference that is resistance right no phase difference Right. So, in phase a diagram, both IR and VR would be in the same line. So VR also would be here. So in this particular phase a diagram, in this particular section, both VR and VC are same because both are parallel. So both VR and VC are same. Right. So we have drawn VL. we have drawn vc vr ir il and ic only one thing is uh, remaining that is the total voltage 
total voltage is 18.86 in minus 19.4 right so it would be somewhere here so this would be e right you can check this right so the civil students will help you to check that because the term civil right if you see that civil the voltage is reference here voltage is reference and both i are current you know obviously i is current l here is inductor and c here is capacitor right so when voltage is reference the current of inductor when voltage is refer reference the current of the inductor would be lagging lagging means it will be coming behind the voltage now let's see here now we have vl here in the zero place right v vl is here in zero but if you see the current current il is behind vl it is in the other direction it's behind vl right by 90 degree always the phase difference between vl and il is 90 right so in case of capacitor if you see the capacitor when voltage is reference when voltage of the capacitor voltage of capacitor is reference current of the capacitor is leading it is in front so if you see voltage is here the current of the capacitor ic is in front of the voltage so it is leading so fairly simple you can easily check that we know this angle is 135 and ic that is the voltage angle is 135 and the current angle is 45 so obviously it is leading by 90 degrees so simply you can check with this so done All right so here's the diagram is over very simple so the next part is right uh, they are asking the characteristics so the, now the new question they are asking the characteristic of a circuit at resonance at resonance right at resonance at resonance reactive power is zero right that is the reactive power is zero so power factor would be one power factor would be one so these are the properties here there won't be any reactive power right so in if reactive power should be zero there is a condition for omega omega should be equal to one over root of l into c right that is the other condition so those are the first part those are theories right you can prove this right i leave it to you all you can simply prove this you have to find the total impedance total uh, impedance and equate the imaginary part to zero that's all so the next part here is they are saying again the same circuit they are asking us to consider the same circuit as here in the sixth question b part and they are asking us to consider that this circuit is at uh, resonance so if the circuit is at resonance we have to find the omega so omega is equal to 1 over square root of 250 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 so we will get a new omega here right mm. and they have given the input v input voltage as 34 so what would be the rms so v rms would be 34 by root 2 right? and again they are asking us to calculate all the values so you have to find il you have to find ic you have to find IR, VL, VC, VR, and you have to draw the phase diagram. Right? Fairly simple way, but the only change is now the omega is different. Earlier question, the omega was 2000. Now you will get another value. You have to calculate this value and repeat the same calculations what we have done here. So I think uh, that is not a difficult task to do. Right? So I am going to move to the last section which i uh, thought to discuss right uh, that is about the multimeters right so in multimeter there are two sections one is the ammeter and uh, another one is the voltmeter and there's another part that is ohm meter that which measures the resistance here uh, the multimeter question in multimeter question there is two circuits one is in long shunt and other one is in short shunt 
the only different is the way of connecting it right so here there is a battery right here there is a resistance we have an ammeter right here there is another resistance right another resistance here uh, if it is short shunt the voltmeter would be here right so in long shunt the same circuit right the circuit voltmeter would be here so this is the difference between uh, short shunt this is short and this is long so that is the small difference right so uh, they have given us some values this is 7 ampere and uh, this one is 400 this has an internal resistance of 50 this has an internal resistance of 500 kilo ohms this has an internal resistance of uh, r1 has a resistance of 1000 right so in if it is ideal right for ideal instruments the resistance of v is voltmeter is infinite and resistance of m, m meter is zero ideal so if instruments are ideal you can you use either network either short one or long one in both the case the meters will read the same reading right you can check that i'll do for one you can do the other one by use yourself and you can find right so here let's say the current flowing is i this current is coming through the thousand it flows through 5550 and if the resistance is infinitely high there will be no current flowing through voltmeter so the, all the current will be flowing through this 400 ohms and it will come back here so you can use curve of slow for uh, this network so i is equal 7 is equal to 1000 i plus here if it is ideal both are ideal now i am doing for ideal so the, the 50 ohms is considered as zero and it has no resistance so it's 400 into i only so i is equal to 7 by 1400 right the voltage reading would be 7 by 1400 into 400 so i into r so this would be the ideal values right but in real world there is no any instrument like this right there is no instrument so first we'll do for the short shunt case so in short shunt right uh, here you see there is a current uh, 400 it will definitely divide right here it is 500 kilo ohm here it is 400 so the ratio between resistance is if you take the resistance the ratio is 500 into 10 to the power 3 is to 400 right so what would be the ratio of current the other way around that is 400 is to 500 into 10 to the power 3 so if you solve this uh, you will get i'll do a quick solving 500 into 1000 by 400 so it's 1 is to 1250 so 1 is to 1250 so if a current of one portion goes into voltmeter the in other the other side there is 1250 i flowing so what is the total current so 1251 right so you can't omit uh, here here this is 1250 i here this is only i so it is very small current so i am neglecting you can't do that work so you had you are testing the circuit right so you have to consider every small currents so here you are going to apply curve of slow so from curve of slow 7 equal 1251 i into 1000 plus again this 50 ohms that part so again 1251 i into 50 plus i'm using the large network outer network 400 into 1250 i so you can calculate i from this part then what would be the reading of uh, a the reading of m meter reading of i write in next page so reading of a that is the current flowing through that one that is 1250i so you have to find that value that's all so what would be the reading of voltmeter so reading of reading of voltmeter would be either i into 500k 
either that would be i into 500 into 10 to the power 3 or it would be 1250 i into 400 both would be equal either this would be 1500 i into 400 both are equal this would be the reading of voltmeter right so in long shunt case here let's say the current flowing through here is i so this is 550 this is 400 so now the ratio is bit different now what is the reference in long shunt case the resistance ratio is 450 is to 500 into 10 to the power 3 so you have to simplify and uh, the ratio is 9 is to 10,000 right so what would be the current ratio current ratio would be 10,000 is to 9 other way around so here if 9 i current flows through here the current flowing through this part is 10,000 i so what is the total current that is 10,000 and 9 i so again you have to apply Kirchhoff's law for the long shunt so if you apply Kirchhoff's law right, 7 equal 10,009 i into 1000 plus if you see the circuit it's 10,000 i into 50 and again 400 also so 10,000 i into 450 don't worry the numbers are big and all you can simply use the calculator and you can find high i here right so what is the reading of m meter here reading of ampere meter so what is the current flowing through the ampere meter ampere meter current is 10,000 i so the reading is 10,000 i right what is the reading of voltmeter voltmeter reading would be either voltmeter reading would be 10,000 i into 450 because voltmeter is connected to both ampere meter and resistance so the voltmeter reading would be 10,000 i into 450 or 9 i into resistance of voltmeter either one so this would be equal to 10,000 i into 450 or 9 i into 500 into 10 to the power 3 right so that is the question right they are asking the last part here is they are asking which circuit is more accurate so you have to find the numerical value of this one right this numerical value you have to find this numerical value of voltmeter also and you have to find uh, check which is close to ideal values whichever the circuit reading the values which are closer to ideal value that is the better circuit right so simple as that right so these are the things which i thought of uh, covering today in this session right so um, I'll attach a PDF to you all of the exam paper, right? Uh, I hope you all would have understood the concepts. And if you need any more sessions, uh, please uh, do request to me in my page and email. Uh, all the links I would be in the description. Uh, so hope to meet you all soon, right? Bye bye.